joining me. This video is about my pocket food kit. Stay tuned. Okay, so pocket food kit. What is it? It's exactly what it says it is. It's a little bit like your personal survival kit. Yeah, but it's a pocket food kit. There's items in this little pouch here that would, should the need arise, uh, enable me to fish, hunt, trap, and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's crack on and have a look. So in this Ziploc, there are four, I believe it is, pre-made snares. So basically it's just snare wire with an eyelet and there's four pre-made snares. Then we have a small tin. Uh, let's just dispense with the tape. Okay, so contents. There is a mini chem light, it can be used as a lure, or just so you can see what you're doing. Some fake bait, uh, fake sweet corn, fake maggot in red and white. In this one, are some fake worms and they are actually coated with worm extract so they're a bit stinky. Uh, fake bait does work it's not as good as live bait obviously but uh, in an ideal world if you had to implement using this kit then I'd be digging up the ground uh, to find worms I think in America you call them night crawlers if there's a bit of roadkill you might find some maggots here's what it is unscented nappy sack or poo bag whatever you want to call it but it's unscented folds up very small and the idea is, is if, if I do actually source some live bait such as maggot from roadkill yeah or worms etc I've got somewhere to put them so into the bag a tin opener because you never know you might come across a, a discarded tin of baked beans who knows A sewing bobbin. This one contains 96 foot of six pound uh, breaking strain monofilament. Another sewing bobbin. This one contains, I think it's 40 foot. Oh, sorry, you'll have to excuse me, I can't remember now. Yeah, 40 foot of braid. And that's got a breaking strain of just over 20 pound. Uh, it's very thin, very strong, no stretch. Four curtain eyelets can be used to make an improvised rod. Can also be used to screw into trees, to pass cordage through, uh, to do traps and snares. Two made floats, or I think in America you call them bobbers. Uh, basically it's a length of peacock quill, which is very buoyant. I've just marked the top with a little bit of black marker pen. And at the bottom are float adapters, which is basically a piece of silicon sleeve with half a swivel in. So, two of those. A small pair of nail clippers, uh, just for trimming line. cut down disgorger uh, I'm not sure I would imagine you've got them in America uh, basically it's used to remove the, the hook uh, from a fish there's a barrel and it's got a, a slot in it you slide the line through the slot follow it down into the fish's mouth put pressure on the, the shank of the hook where the bend is push it down and just turn it and it enables unhooking uh, obviously hooks are going to be of a premium then in these containers, there are 20 size 14 barbed hooks. 
I know generally speaking, especially in the UK, when it comes to freshwater fishing, a lot of it is with barbless for fish safety. But from, but from a survival point of view, these are barbed hooks. They're less likely to come out. And it's a size 14. Uh, small hooks catch big and small fish. Large hooks only catch large fish. So size 14, which is ample for the sort of fish you're likely to come across in uh, fresh waters in the UK. So there's 20 hooks there. A selection of split shot from swan shot down to about number fours. Uh, I think you call them sinkers in the US, but a selection of a shot. A scalpel blade. And then here are 10 hooks ready tied to nylon. They're a size 16 barbed and they're tied to 12 inches of five pound breaking strain uh, monofilament. Often you see with survival kits, they have fishing stuff in them and hooks, but you need to be able to know, I fish anyway, but you need to be able to know how to tie a hook onto the line. And if you're cold, if the light's not particularly good, if you're getting old, like me, and you're wearing glasses, it can be a bit of a drama tying hooks. So it makes perfect sense to tie your hooks in the confines of your home, where you're nice and warm and you can see, and then put them in your survival kit. It makes life so much easier. But there's 10, as I say, size 16 uh, barbed hooks to nylon. And then what we've got on the reverse of the tin, just under this little bit of duct tape here, is a homemade spear point. Uh, for small game, etc. So that's it. And basically, that is a teaspoon stolen from the kitchen, hammered flat, then mark a pen to mark the shape, cut down the stem notched it so it can be lashed onto something easy enough and then with a file put an edge on it and that's plenty sharp enough as I say as a make do spear point or an arrowhead whatever cheap as chips yeah you could even go into a charity shop and buy some teaspoons as I say bash them flat mark them out tin snips to shape file to put an edge on it jobs are good and and that's just kept as you saw underneath the tin underneath a bit of duct tape so that's it if it's of any use to you please send me some comments put some comments in if the video you know if you found it useful or whatever please consider subscribing and hit the, hit the like button uh, thank you very much and goodbye